from Washington, this is VOA News. Islamic militants gain more ground in Iraq. Two Palestinians killed as Israel continues searching for kidnapped teenagers. I'm Ray Kugel reporting in Washington. Sunni militants in Iraq have seized two more border crossings, one with Syria and one with Jordan. In addition to the four nearby towns captured by insurgent forces since Friday. Security officials say the Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant is now in control of those towns in Iraq's western Anbar province. Elsewhere, at least six people were killed Sunday by a suicide bomber and a car bomb in the provincial capital of Ramadi. The attack targeted mourners at the funeral of an Iraqi police officer. President Obama is warning the insurgent strength could grow and destabilize other Middle East countries. President Obama says the U.S. must remain vigilant, but would not send U.S. troops occupying various countries wherever the terror organizations are showing up. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry met with Egypt's President Abdel Fattah el-Sisi during an unannounced trip to the country. Secretary Kerry arrived Sunday in Cairo for the highest level meeting with the new Egyptian leader since the country's presidential election last month. During the visit, Secretary Kerry called for Egyptian authorities to uphold universal rights of free speech and free assembly. Mr. Kerry held earlier talks with the foreign minister Sameh Shukri. VOA's Elizabeth Arad reports. At a news conference with his Egyptian counterpart, Mr. Kerry pointed to Washington and Cairo's long-standing and deep partnership and said the two would work together to counter terrorist threats. But he acknowledged both sides have things we can do better and called for upholding universal rights of free speech and free assembly. This is a critical moment of transition in Egypt. The United States is very interested in working closely with President al-Sisi in order to help make this transition as rapidly and smoothly as possible. But it's unclear how much clout the United States has in Egypt and in the region after the fallout from its invasion of Iraq and what many here consider Washington's mistakes during the Arab Spring uprisings and their aftermath. Elizabeth Tharrett, VOA News, Cairo. Israeli troops shot dead two Palestinians in the West Bank on Sunday in separate incidents that erupted as the military continues its search for three Israeli teenagers missing since June 12th. Ahead of Sunday's cabinet meeting in Jerusalem, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said Israel has conclusive evidence that Hamas is behind the kidnappings and is sharing that evidence with several other countries before making it public. Hamas has not claimed responsibility. Pakistan says more than 300,000 people, including women and children, have left its North Waziristan border district, where an army counterterrorism offensive is underway. But a senior minister has rejected UN reports that thousands of Pakistanis have also fled into Afghanistan seeking safety. Ayaz Ghul has details from Islamabad. The fighting has caused a flood of people to flee Waziristan. Federal Minister Abdul Qadir Baloch is supervising relief operations for the internally displaced people. However, Baloch says few families have shown up at the relief centers. They don't like to stay in the camps. They, were, they prefer to go back to go to different areas, uh, to their relations, and uh, to take uh, houses on rent, uh, live elsewhere instead of living in the camps. The minister says families are being provided with food, drinks and cash to meet their urgent needs. He tells VOA that the number of refugees is swelling by the day and is expected to go well beyond 400,000. Ayaz Gul for VOA News, Islamabad. U.S. Army Sergeant Bo Bergdahl was released from the military hospital where he's being treated since arriving in the United States more than a week ago. 
Army officials say the former prisoner of war will continue to receive outpatient care at the Brook Army Medical Center at Fort Sam Houston in Texas. Sergeant Bergdahl has been in the care of military medical personnel since the Taliban Allied Forces released him just over three weeks ago after five years of captivity. The Army says his reintegration process continues. And in World Cup football action, the United States and Portugal played to a two-all tie. In earlier play, Algeria defeated South Korea Sunday 4-2, while Belgium scored a late goal to knock off Russia 1-0. Belgium's victory clinched a berth in the round of 16. I'm Ray Kugel in Washington. That's the latest world news from VOA.